know that the election uh, for the midterm is a handful of days away, but after that, you're going to have to start thinking about citywide elections and who you want to be your next Springfield City Alderman, or if you live outside of the city, a bunch of other elections as well for the consolidated municipal elections. That's going to take place in April, but there's also the possibility of some primaries in February, depending on how many people are on the ballot. And one particular Springfield citywide race uh, where we do see a, a, a number of people on the ballot. Uh, I'm not sure the threshold to make a primary, but uh, there are three names that have been thrown out there. We don't have the ballot certified yet because people are still out there gathering signatures. And I assume one of those that's gathering signatures is Bill McCarty. He is the city's budget director, and he joins us now because he's running for city treasurer. Uh Director, thanks for taking time. How you doing? <laughs> Good morning, Greg. I'm doing well. Thank you. So um, why city treasurer? You've been a mayor of a small uh, community. Uh, you've been the city's budget director for the city of Springfield under two different administrations. You've seen the worst of it. You've seen uh, incredible surpluses uh, and everything in between. Right. Uh, so why now do you want to be a city treasurer? Well, let's start with what something you mentioned. I was mayor of Williamsville and before that a trustee out there. And one of the things I've been telling people is when you're in a position like that and you are accountable directly to the voters, there's just no better feeling. Uh, as a staff member, I there's an intermediary. Of course, I report to the mayor and the mayor reports to the voters. And it has been a fantastic I, job. The, the, the position that I've had and fortunate to have for 12 years, longer than anybody else, I think the next closest person had it for eight, and I have two different administrations is truly a rare event. And it is a position I could keep doing. I could keep doing it for another 12, 15 years, whatever, until retirement. But at the same time, just the thought of having an opportunity to go back to being responsible directly to the voters, those folks being my boss, there's just no better feeling. And and I had thought about running for city treasurer. I've been thinking about it for quite some time. And to be honest with you, I assumed I would be doing it, but I assumed it would be four years from now, not right now. I really thought that uh, the current treasurer would run for a third and final term and then potentially look at doing the mayor's race. It just uh, came four years sooner than I thought. And I, I can't I can't let the opportunity pass by. It's, it's just too good of an opportunity. And now's the time. We're talking with Bill McCarty, the city's budget director, but looking to be the next city treasurer. Of course, these are uh, nonpartisan races, uh, so it'll be interesting to see all of the different things that come up. And I think one reason, you know, uh, one good thing about it being nonpartisan is you guys get to actually talk about the issues instead of, you know, saying, well, this person's a a MAGA Republican or this person's, you know, a a hardcore lefty or whatever the case may be. You guys are actually going to be talking about issues. Uh, So what are some of those issues at the treasurer's office? Well, I'm going to address your thing about the partisanship. I agree with you 100 percent. It's one of the reasons I love city races is because they are nonpartisan. You can don't have to worry about that. I myself have a lot of friends on both sides of the aisle, so to not have to choose a side or run on one particular side, I think, is is a great thing. So I very much look forward to doing that. In terms of the issues at the Treasurer's Office, I do have uh, several ideas for it. I'm still formulating some of those, and I'll probably be bringing those out more uh, probably after the first of the year. One of the things I don't want to do or I I don't plan to do is I kind of want to give people a break after this election, let them enjoy the holidays. So I don't plan to do a whole lot of campaigning between now and the end of the year. Just let people get some of their sanity back because it's it's just I don't have to tell you and I don't have to tell everybody listening. It is it's nuts out there right now with all of the the phone calls and the commercials and the mail showing up. You know, people just need a break. But I, I do have some things in the treasurer's office I'd like to see done differently. And uh, we'll be talking about those at a later point in time. For people who don't know what the role of the city treasurer is, uh, they, they may get a, uh, a mailing from the treasurer from time to time talking about a bill that they're owed uh, or... Gosh, I've had to go to the treasurer's office a couple of times. You ever get, ever uh, get a parking, parking ticket? ticket. Right. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So, exactly. We haven't necessarily seen a whole flood of those because the uh, the parking meters still are not taking right. money, right? As so, of right now, they're still free. Yeah. Um, so uh, obviously that's a, a transition that's going to happen. But for people who don't know what the treasurer does, kind of lay right. that out. Right. Well, the, primarily the, the, the treasurer is the custodian of city money, city funds. They work hand in hand with a city budget office, which is one of the reasons why uh, it's after 12 years, I think I'm probably the best qualified candidate for it. 
But they're the custodian. They oversee the banking for the city. They're essentially the city's banker. They also oversee investing those funds as well. They collect fees and fines. Those are the primary things that, that the citizens would be most aware of with the, with the city treasurer's office. Bill McCarty joins us. He is the city's budget director. He is uh, tossing his hat into the ring, uh, circulating petitions. And you guys got to get those petitions in, what, the 21st? 21st through the 28th, Greg, okay. is when they're due. So the, the petitions start uh, the 21st, and they have seven days to turn those in. Um, how's it been? How's it been? Are you going door to door? Are you just hitting well, up your close friends? Or? I just announced this week. <laughs> right. uh, but it, it, it's been interesting because I've had a lot of folks reach out and ask to pass for me, so it won't be just me out there. And we've already started getting getting some. Uh, I myself have been pretty busy this week, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. Uh, I do have kids that are in seventh and freshmen, so they've had things going on, and uh, I'll be hitting it pretty hard this weekend, but I haven't gotten out there too much right now. Uh, but I'll tell you, the people that I have talked to a little bit, one of the reasons uh, getting into this race, we talk about, and, and Greg, you and I have talked about this throughout the years. I've been fortunate to be on with you many times talking about yeah. city finances, and you're right. We've seen the highs. We've seen the lows. And one of the reasons I'm so interested in this race is because you think about where we talked a decade ago, where were city finances? Coming out of the Great Recession, the city was essentially broke. I think I remember Mayor Houston using the term virtually bankrupt. Mm -hmm. He's not wrong. We were having negative fund balances or negative negative cash balances, negative average daily balances, negative $4 million coming out of the Great You remember those numbers, It was ugly. With the council round up, it was tough. It was so ugly. To hear the the treasurer's report from time to time yes, and cash balances exactly. and all that. And now we we you know we've worked hard over that last 12 years and we've gone from in the great recession there was about a 2.8 million dollar was the low watermark for fund reserves and now coming out of this last year we were at a record 54 million dollars. Being in the city treasurer's office, I'll be in a position to help protect that. I'll have an independent voice, not beholden to the mayor, not beholden to the city council. And having my knowledge of the city budget, it puts me in the perfect position to help safeguard taxpayer dollars because I'll be able to watch. I'll know what's going on. And best of all, I'll be able to speak up and speak out about it. We've seen two other names uh, at least float uh, consideration for this particular office, one being the deputy treasurer, I believe, right. yep. um, and then uh, another being a, 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 a different uh, elected official in a different taxi right. body. Right. Um, but uh, where do you see yourself among the field so far uh, that, we, that we may have? Well, you know, I, I personally consider myself to be the best candidate so far simply because I've been at the city for 12 years working in city finances. I know the budget inside and out better than anybody that's in the race. And on top of that, I had eight years of state government finance before that. So I've got 20 years of government finance that I think puts me in a perfect position along with, again, the fact that I know the city budget inside and out, which which is, I think, makes me well suited to, as we mentioned, safeguard taxpayer Let's let's see if that's true here. Uh, how much do uh, uh, how much did the city get when we had the parking meters a year? <laughs> so we had about four hundred thousand dollars a year <laughs> in people plugging the meters, and about another mm, three four hundred three hundred fifty thousand oh, wow. in people paying fines no to the treasurer's office. Yes, wow. so, and now it's well much less because we're not. That's, They're not charging that's like for the meters. Seven hundred thousand plus dollars. Yeah, it's roughly. Um, roughly. Wow. Uh, so yeah, that's that's something to consider. Um, and and there's a there's a who who would manage the because I know there's talk about changing the meters. Is there, that is would that be a treasurer's deal no. or that would that would be the city public works? No, the treasurer just collects collects money. Gotcha. Uh, public works is the one that oversees our city parking meters, and it's in conjunction with I, I've said in many of those meetings, and we have had ideas and do have ideas on modernizing our parking meters with credit card capabilities, with paying on your phone capabilities. All of that was actually well in motion when the pandemic hit. Since the pandemic hit and is still somewhat ongoing, uh, the mayor has decided just not yet to revert back to paying meters, and therefore there's no reason to go out and spend money Money on new parking meters at this time. But uh, suffice to say, when the time comes, we do have a plan in place to, to make some improvements there to bring those things in out of the 1970s and into the 
the 2000s. Again, talking with uh, Bill McCarty, he is looking to get the spot of Springfield City Treasurer. Uh, finally here, there's also the, um, and, and Treasurer Busher has talked about this from time to time in some meetings, uh, about uh, collecting what the city's owed. Right. Um, what efforts would you bring about to, to make that happen? Uh, would it be you know more vendors to go out and, and uh, capture those dollars, or is it something that the city can do internally to go out there and capture those dollars to find taxpayer savings? How do you handle that? Well, it's interesting. Collecting collecting uh, overdue debt is one of the things that has been a focus of the treasurer's office, but not just there. Legal as well, public works. There are a lot of folks that are involved in that effort. And the one thing that, again, I don't want to talk too much about plans, but I, I can tell you that collaboration is extremely important. Everybody has to be on board. And we would need to just keep furthering the efforts that are already in place. Look and see if there are some other things out there that we can add to it. Uh, unfortunately, Craig, it's it's much harder to collect debt these days. And the city, I can tell you, at one time had debt that was on the books for 20 years. Oh you know, I'll tell you a quick funny story on this. So when I ran for, I think it was mayor in 2011, if you remember that, uh, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that all of my fines and fees were paid off. So That's I right. went to the treasurer's office. They had... <laughs> They had me down for uh, paying for an overdue parking ticket from 1989. This was in 2011, oh, Greg. Gosh. It was 1989 or 1988. Wow. And I said, I didn't even have a license then. Well, what it turns out is it was my dad, I guess. Oh, wow. I now have that license plate that was on the vehicle oh. at the time is on my vehicle and it registered to me. <laughs> so somehow I ended up paying for a 20-year-old fine that I what didn't even incur. What was the charge even... on that? I, I can't <laughs> well, luckily, luckly, it was capped. I think I, oh, ended, I think it was okay. like 20 bucks or something <laughs> like that. I don't even remember. But I'm thinking Jeez. to myself, really? Wow. And I'm like, I'm thinking, I don't know if I legally have to pay this, but I'm going to go Just ahead go and do ahead. it yeah. anyway. Write the check. Get it done. <laughs> but no, yeah, man. so yeah, we had, we had some overdue debt, and, and, and that is an issue. So we want to make sure that we continue to, to be uh, diligent on, on collecting that, because it is important. Bill McCarty, he is looking to be the next city treasurer. Uh, and of course, we'll likely talk with him and others about this office and other offices that are up for consideration in the April election. We can get through the midterm here uh, in just a handful of days, but uh, Bill will we'll likely talk again in the near future. Appreciate Absolutely. Your time. Happy to. It is Springfield's morning news on WMAY. Let's take a look at Springfield.